I'm going to hand over to Alec for a few seconds so he can lead us in, um, in some praise and worship. And um, we'll go from there. So, Alec, can I hand over to you? Just remember, everybody, please uh, turn your mics off because otherwise we're going to get a lot of feedback. And um, I think there's going to be lag uh, with all these screens that are on, so we're not going to be singing together. It'll sound like we're a bunch of screaming cats. But I encourage you, let's all sing together at home, but with our mics off. Um, so we can still, still uh, praise and worship the Lord together. Thank you, Alec. Can you take over there? No problem, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Just, uh, mm -hmm. One more sec. I just want to try this link one more time. Um, in, fact, in fact, before we start, can we pray quickly? Let's commit the meeting to the Lord first. Okay, thanks, Doug. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the day that you've given to us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather around together in your midst, Lord God. And although we are far away from each other in, 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 in physical distancing, Lord God, we are, we are together in one spirit. And Heavenly Father, we pray that as we, as we partake of this, of this glorious and majestic time of, of thinking about what you and, and, and the Lord Jesus have done for us on the cross, Lord God, that you will soften each and every one of our hearts and, and Lord, that our focus will be around you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah, Alec, are you ready? Amen. Thanks, Doug. One more time. No. no, unable to do the link tonight. We'll just upload the, the video later. So we're going to start with, uh, there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. And the chorus says, O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee near to the heart of God. Amen. All right. Someone's mic that's on. Armand? Sorry. It's me, Alex. Sorry. Okay. Switch it off. Switch it off. All right. <clears throat> the next song. It's, uh, we all know this one, Man of Sorrows, What a Name. And it says, Hallelujah, What a Savior. Amen. Nice. Nice to have you guys, Ari and Taryn. Praise the Lord, man. Sorry, man. When we sing, we just put our mics off. Otherwise, it, uh, otherwise it becomes a problem. I see Craig and them have also just joined up. Um, all right. I just want to share the screen here. Amen.
I mean, they sing a little bit differently, this one. So, sorry, just one sec. I just see something. Just want to mute Craig and M's mic as well. There we go. Craig, I've muted your mic. All right. All right. And sing the last one at the end. Thanks, Alec. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to go into a time of sharing now. Um, so if the Lord has placed anything in your heart, um, and obviously we also want to hear any testimonies. So maybe before we start in, 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 the, in the, the sharing part of the thing, has anybody got a testimony 
um, that they'd like to share about, um, about what the Lord has laid on their heart. And um, obviously, guys, when we go into the time of sharing, we want to share around, what the, ta- around the table. Let's not uh, get uh, distracted and start speaking about all other stuff. Let's uh, focus on why we're actually here this evening. Um, the Lord says that when we come together, we, we need to break bread after as we meet. But at the same time, it's to remember about Him. So I just, um, you know, the request is obviously just keep it around the table. But before we get started, is there somebody that wants to share a testimony? You can unmute your mics, guys. Yes, I would like to. Thanks, Chanel. Okay, can happy, I go? Happy um, birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Happy um, birthday. On, on Wednesday, I shared um, about my mom and everybody prayed. And um, I know, you know, it was earnestly from... <laughs> from our hearts in front of the Lord. And I was just quickly, um, just want to tell you that in two days time, my mom started walking and, um, uh, you know, everything that we prayed for is happening. And I know there's a song and I just, I just want to read the words to you. And this is, this is absolutely uh, my, exhortation to the Lord, if that's the right word in English. But the song is, say, you are the miracle worker, Mm. or the way maker, Mm. you are the promise keeper, you are the light in the darkness. Even when I don't see it, you are working. Even when I don't feel it, you are working. My God, that is who you are. And it's just, and it's just, yes, I just want to say, that is my God, the miracle worker. And I yeah. praise his name for that. And he died yeah. for the sole purpose of what we're about. And that is the Lord Jesus and what he has accomplished on, on our stead so that we can be free and sit here tonight and just praise his name and give everything to him. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Yeah, if, um, you know, the miracle that has just been spoken of. I mean, what a wonderful miracle it is that uh, when Christ was hanging on that cross, as, you know, just been shared in uh, the words of that song, he is a miracle worker. And when he said it was finished on that cross, I mean, that is the mightiest miracle of all, that we would be able to enter in to eternal life. And when you just look look around us today, I mean, what a miracle it is that we can set our affections on things about because they, I mean, you know, we've all had our affections on things on this earth and lifestyles and the comforts of this life, so to speak. But through this process, all of those things have almost been rocked. And, and just in Colossians chapter three, it just says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. And, and you know, when it says that he intercedes for us, he is, he is sitting at, on the right hand of God. So we are seated in heavenly places through him. We're not in some back room in heaven. We're not in some um, place where we've had to qualify to be. He has qualified us. He has qualified us to sit on the, at the right hand of the Father in and through him. Because... We are in him and he in us. And it says in verse 2, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So even we consider that as a joy set before him, he set his affection on things above. Christ set his affection on uh, to do the will of his Father. And for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. How amazing is that? That God no longer sees us as sinners, but he sees us as the righteousness, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. He sees us perfect in and through Jesus Christ. And it says um, in verse 4, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. And that's a wonderful consolation for us. Um, And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, it just says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ 
at his coming. So that is our hope. What he accomplished on the cross for us is our hope is that we believe it. And our hope is that one day we will meet him and we will be reconciled in, in the fullness um, with, with him, with our father in heaven. And then just in um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, it says, or 26, it says, even the mystery which has been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. So this breaking of bread that we even take in part of, it, it's a, it was a mystery. They didn't break bread in the Old Testament. This was a mystery. And so now we're partaking remembering what Christ did for us until he comes. And it says, um, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, mm. which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so when we suddenly have a look at that, um, we, we see that it is Christ in us who is our hope of glory. There, we have no other hope. We can hope in nothing else on this earth. But Christ in us is our hope of glory. So, you know, when those words of the mighty miracle maker, can you imagine just what actually happened on the cross that day? Everything went dark. And you know what? It says he, he tore the partition in two. And that curtain that was torn in two the high priest used to go behind the curtain. Only the high priest could go behind the curtain. But Christ entered into that once and for all to stand before God for the judgment of sin and of all of our sin. And <coughs> on the day that was ripped apart, that we could come, <coughs> excuse me, that we could come boldly to the throne of grace. So even as we enter in tonight, what a wonderful privilege it is. I trust that none of us would be silent, but we would all just give all glory and honor and praise to our Lord. Amen. 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 Your brother and sister, I greet you in a wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. And uh, my brother Gareth, I've got exactly the same um, topic on my heart. 2,000 years ago when Lord Jesus, um, the, the, the whole crucifixion, those couple of days, um, there are so many aspects to it. And I, I think every second in terms of physical time that lapsed while the Lord Jesus was being being taken into custody and, and his hearing and, and, and everything he went through, every second of that can result in a Bible study. And there's a whole topic and, and a, a much we can, can take out of that. And I think um, when we get to heaven, I think for eternity, we're going to speak about the, the events, the number of events that took place. And, and I don't want to single out a single one that's greater than the other because they all are, are part of the same thing. But one thing tonight that I have on my heart is that veil that was rent in twine. The, the purpose of the Lord Jesus going to Calvary was so that that veil could be, it says here, and I want to read, it's uh, Luke 23 verse uh, 44. Five, uh, if I can see it, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Dear brother and sister, previously, like we heard, there was a building in Jerusalem, and in that building, the holiest of holies, and this veil, uh, I couldn't find the scripture now, as 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 in like 20 minutes ago, the Lord just laid this on my heart, and and even my brother sitting here next to me, we, we couldn't now quickly find the scripture where it describes that veil, but that veil, the Afrikaans says a voorhangsel. And in my mind, before I read the scripture, it was just like a curtain, a piece of cloth, material, fabric, that, that, that you can take with a human hand and maybe tear and, and divide. But that veil of the temple was of, of a much greater and stronger construction um, made that that's no human would be able to tear it. Even, even the strongest man on earth couldn't do it. But yet when Lord Jesus, when he hung there on the cross, when he died, that veil was rent in twine. And that is the, the significance of the gospel message. That is the, the and often we, 
Now, like Brethren referred to, that's the mystery, is that that veil is rent in twine. It is open. There's access unto our Father. And uh, God don't want us to still worship like people did 2,000 years ago. God wants us now to come in and worship at his feet. He doesn't want us to stand outside. And I was just considering that even in God's infinite wisdom, 70, 80, 70 years later, God even allowed that physical building where this red um, uh, uh, um, veil still must have been to be destroyed. Can you imagine that, that say for instance, that temple still existed today? How yeah, people might have flocked there. But thank God in his infinite mercy and in his infinite wisdom that, that God allowed that place to be destroyed. And what I just sense from that, God does not want us to worship without. There's no resemblance of the old. All we have is the new. And the new is by faith seated in heavenly places. And what I have from my heart, dear brother and sister, is that nothing, nothing could have destroyed, could have um, parted that veil. But also what I want to say, nothing can restore it, bring it back. Nothing can separate us from the presence of God. Nothing can take us from his hand. No authority, no organization, no council, group of people, no government, no law. Nothing can separate us from the presence of God. And, mm -hmm. and yesterday I had brethren here and my heart was just to share with them and even us using this, this medium of fellowshipping. In the beginning, six weeks ago, whenever, eight weeks ago, when we started Zooming, our, my, my um, heart was, yeah, it's not a real thing. Uh, but, but there's a saying, rather, uh, we said, uh, um, of an egg than, a, than an empty shell. And that was my heart. Okay, yeah, this is second best, but we'll, we haven't got anything else. We'll settle for this. And still, the Lord shared this with me. It's about Him. It's about His presence. It's about that veil that was rented in twine. And I'm still there. So my heart is, dear brother and sister, don't let us allow anything to veil God's presence for us again. God forbid. Lord yeah. Jesus died so that that veil could be rent in twine. Let's yeah. enter in. Let's not a condition of your heart. That maybe thinking, listen, zooming is second best. Zooming is not second best. No. It's the real thing because we're on heavenly places in yes. Christ Jesus. Tonight, we are seated at the feet of our Father. Mm. We are sitting there. I'm physically sitting here, but it's just a, uh, don't look at me. It's just a picture of my heart. Dear brother and sister, we are with God. We are with our Father. Mm -hmm. I tonight, I say, I say in humbleness, I am rich. I say, I am strong. Because mm -hmm. God has given me all my wealth. He is all my wealth. And He is all my ability. Mm, praise the Lord. And He is all I have. It's a precious place at the feet of Lord Jesus. Don't let any anything rob you from the victory we have in Christ Jesus, the ability to come and sit at the feet of our Father. There's no, no such a place on earth. And what you and I have tonight, dear brother and sister, kings and princes and authorities of this world and people wherever, all over the world crave, they decide, but they don't know where to look. But thank God, and I was sharing with brethren yesterday, religion is man seeking God. But gospel is God seeking man. And God came and he did everything. And he passed away. That virus rent into one. He came looking for me. And he found me. And he's poured in the oil and the wine. And he's put me on his animal. And he's taken me to the inn. His London assembly. This is where I am. That's where we are tonight. Your brothers and sisters. And I was just thinking that the only thing that can come between God and I is my own heart. My own ears. I was sharing with people recently. We know these principles. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But sometimes we've got earplugs in. We don't hear. And even this hour, I just sense the shouting of the world. I just sense the screaming at us. It reminds me of army. 
where instructions was barked upon us. And you had no choice but to follow. But don't forget, dear brother and sister, our God, my God, your God, speaks by a small, still voice. But because it's small and still, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't get heard. But we have to tune in our ears sharply so that we can hear. And God speaks. And have you heard him speaking this morning? Have you heard him speaking this morning? Where he said, I am in control. The things that you experience now, God in his infinite wisdom knew from before they began, the foundation of the earth and he's written it in his word and it's there for us so that we can be encouraged, not frightened by things happening around us. So that we can, mm -hmm. can, can be equipped with knowledge so we know what's happening. We are those, dear brother and sister, that's not blind. We have received sight. Our eyes have been anointed by the Lord Jesus through his word. Our ears has been touched so that we can hear. Isn't, shouldn't it be a, a, the greatest tragedy that today we don't see and we don't hear? The only thing that can cause that is my own heart. So here tonight we are, I pray, having examined our hearts, even this morning and, and today. And my heart is just that, that I just have a heart to say, Lord, I hear you speak. I hear your voice. Help me, Lord, to block my ears for the false in, um, um, information, for the false teaching. And dear brother and sister, my heart is just, let this always, and especially tonight and today, freshly embrace that truth which has been ministered upon uh, among us through the ministries among us. So this morning, not exalting my dear brother Russell, but that is the vessel God in his infinite wisdom chose this morning freshly to speak to us as his London, his London Assembly and whoever else might be tuned in. God is speaking to us. Listen to that. Don't let anything rob you from the presence of God. And tonight, Lord Jesus, what we're celebrating is that Lord Jesus died, that veil is rent in twine, and I am seated. You and I am seated at the feet of your Father. Don't let anything make you think any otherwise. This is reality. This is the truth. The Lord bless you. Amen. Mm -hmm. May I? The Lord. Um, this morning I didn't watch the sermon. Um, and around 12 o'clock I was reading my Bible. And I was reading Romans chapter 8. And then at around 4 o'clock I went and I watched the sermon. And let alone Uncle Russ is preaching on, on Romans 8. But I'm going to keep it short. I just want to add one or two verses from like what he said. Um, and I'll start from Romans 8 chapter 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus that made me free from the law of sin and death. That it, it was weak through the flesh, but God, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the, the um, spirit. For they that are after the flesh do not mind the things of the flesh, but they that, that are after the spirit, the, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And yeah, that that just confirms everything. And and like also it's like an Uncle Gareth and Uncle Lawrence sharing now. It's, 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 it's so amazing to know that we have a father in heaven who sent his, his like only son to, to die for our sin um, and to make a way for us to like be there with him one day. Um, and even now on, on earth, like be with us in, in his um, presence. It's, it is truly amazing. Um, yeah, I, I thank you. I mean, Don, you were going to 
No, we can't hear you, Don. Your sound's gone off. Uh, unfortunately, Don, we can't hear you. Your mic is again. All right, I, I'll just share something short, Don. Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Your mic's been disconnected. But um, let me just share something short. Um, Isaiah chapter 53, it just says, Who have believed our report and to whom? Is the arm of the Lord revealed? So I just want to do something here. And um, I've, I've read this many times, and we know the scripture very well, where it talks about um, where it talks about what the Lord Jesus went through, and, and much what we heard this evening. But uh, just to confirm what everyone has said, and I'll be very short. It says, "Who have believed our report?" And my question this evening is: As you sit there, have you believed the report that Jesus died? And he went to the cross and he rose from the dead and he lives forevermore. Um, and do you believe the report that he went and he suffered on our behalf? And that's really the question that, that touched my heart. But the second part of that statement there says, who have believed our report? And it says, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And I, I read that and I um, just wondered for a moment, what does that mean? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And just trying to understand it a bit more, arm speaking of strength. And um, what, what that is saying is, who has understood the power of God? So who has believed the report? And do you understand what who this, the, the person that this report is about is about a God that is all powerful? Does it make sense? Who has believed? It says, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom is the power of God revealed? And I just thought, here we sit this evening, we understand what Jesus has done, but do we understand the powerful God that we serve? Do we understand it's the God of heaven that gave everything that heaven could afford in, afford in, the, in the form of the Lord Jesus to send down to this earth yeah. so that we could have life and life more abundantly. So I just, um, sorry, Don, I'm just going to mute you there for a second. Um, so I just, I, I just, it just touched my heart this, this evening. So I just, in your, in your own mind, you know, we understand that Jesus died, but do we understand that it's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the all powerful God that died on the cross of Calvary for us. Um, and oh, it just touched my heart, even as Lawrence was sharing, you know, this veil has been rent in twain. We have access into the presence of God, the almighty God, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Do we even understand that? Who, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Have we understood and has this revelation of the fact that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we have access into that power? And I just, I'm touched by that. So as we, um, I'm sure we're going to a time of praise and worship now. Let's understand where we are. We are in the presence of the Almighty God. It's just such a precious thing. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Alec. Okay, guys, uh, the Lord's definitely spoken clearly this evening. Let's go into a time of, 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 of prayer and supplication. And let's um, spend time in the presence of the Lord. Um, just a reminder that although we're far away from each other, the Lord is, is, does move in the gifts. So if the Lord gives you um, any, of, any of, the, of, the, of the gifts, please bring it forth um, so that we can all partake in it. And um, I encourage everybody who, who has it on their heart to pray this evening, pray. Um, at some point, I will tell you to pick, take up the emblems, and we can all do it together. Um, but yeah, let's 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 enter in, into the Lord's presence here. Amen. Thanks, Doug. Praise you, Lord God. We worship you, Lord Praise Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Mighty God. Great Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, and we thank you, Father. We are just sitting here praying to a screen. And foolishly sitting around um, some technology and all online together. Or else you did die on the cross. You were buried and you did rise again. Mm, and you. Father, tonight we believe that. Thank and you. we stand on that. So we don't want to be considered as foolish as those foolish virgins. 
but as those wise who have oil, who had oil in their lamps and who were ready when um, the bridegroom came. And so even tonight, Lord, you know, we, we can consider it to be foolishness, but you chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that were lost. And it was through the foolishness of preaching that each one of us heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And each one of us gave our hearts to you, Lord Jesus. And on that day, we stood and we, we were able to then cry out, Abba, Father. Mm. And so even tonight, it may seem foolish. It may see, seem something so in the distant past, some 2,000 years ago. And it may seem so far off. But yet, Lord, you, your word even says, my word is near to you. It is nigh to thee. And, and even your word would say to us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm. And in this world, there is so much wantonness at the moment, so much um, desire for things just to return to normality. And I would imagine, Lord, even when the disciples um, came to that point where you were hanging on that cross and they had all dispersed and left you, that they were just desiring, why is this happening? I wish normality would return. But you said, if even the principalities and powers knew, and even when Peter said, you're not going to die, you said, get behind me, Satan. Because, Lord, you knew that in your death that you would rise, you were able to lay down your life and take it up again. And in and through that, you would be able to become the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, thank you for that. Thank you that in and through your son, thank you for giving your son. because. It was your heart, O oh God, that you loved us so much that you would send your son because you want us to be seated in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. You want your children by you. Mm -hmm. You want your children sitting at the throne of grace. You want your children to boldly come to their father, not to, to crawl and grovel and beg, but, but in and through your son, you have said everything that I've given to my son. My son now has given to you. And so, Father, we just want to thank you for that tonight. I pray that we wouldn't see ourselves sitting around our tables, sitting in our homes tonight, but I pray that each one of us would just have a tiny glimpse. Father, give each one of us tonight a tiny, small glimpse and revelation of what it is to be seated in heavenly places, because that's where we are tonight. And we pray to a living God. It might sound foolish, um, praying into a laptop, but, Father, we don't believe that that's the case. We believe we are speaking to you, Father, and that we've been given access to speak to you in and through um, your Son, the Lord Jesus, who, does, who calls us no longer servants, but friends. And so, Father, we just thank you for this privilege, and we want to enter in boldly, um, not with any pride, not with any glory to our works, but all glory to you, and with a humility that just, wants our hearts to pour out through the fruit of our lips and just give you all praise and all honor and all glory. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Praise, praise your name. Praise Lord. Thank you for that confirmation as Dennis was praying, Lord. As I was also just um, realizing that even when we sit in a hall together and we pray together, we are... Um, in your presence, Lord, we enter into holy places and heavenly places. So, Lord, tonight as we pray together and we enter into that heavenly places again, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord, for, for everything you've done for us. Father, for, for that last word on the cross when you said, it is finished. Lord, to, to realize that when, when that was said, it, it actually just it, it, it took everything in perspective, Lord. And today we can enter into heavenly places and know, Lord, that we are saved for eternity. Lord, tonight we come around the table to take part of that and to just be re reminded of what Jesus has done on the cross for us. Father, thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for giving us a hope and an eternity that this world can never ever give for us. Thank you, Father, for, for giving us that, that glimpse into what is to come, Lord. We heard this morning as Russell was ministering, Lord, and and also just what we can see around us, Lord, knowing and, and, and experiencing the chaos this world is, is finding itself in, Lord. But yet, Lord, we as believers 
and as children of God, we have a peace, Lord, that supports all understanding. Lord, I just want to give you all glory and honor, and I thank you, Father, for this privilege that we do have to come together and, and just be in your presence. And we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise Jesus. Jesus. <clears throat> Father, we are thankful, Lord, this evening for this wonderful privilege, this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence, Father. Yes, Lord, in our homes, but yet, Lord, somehow in the Spirit, we sit around that table, Lord. It's a spiritual table which you have set for us in the presence of our enemies. We partake of that bread, the flesh which was torn for us, Father. We partake of that cup, which is the cup of the new covenant, the blood that was spilt, Lord, to wash away our sins. And Father, we are thankful because we understand that even as it is written about man, that he in his wisdom chose not to know God, and neither was he thankful. Father, and that really is what it's about. Are we thankful this evening for the Lord Jesus? And we have to examine our hearts whether that is true, whether we can say in our hearts, if it weren't for thee, Lord Jesus, where would we be? We would be of most men, we would be undone and in a terrible place, Father. We thank you too that our hope is not on this earth this evening, but Lord is in the Lord Jesus who is risen. Thank Father, we understand that he did a mighty work for us on Calvary. Our hearts are touched by that this evening. Lord, we are thankful for we know that there was no sin found in him. And Lord, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And when he suffered, he did not threaten, but he committed himself to him who judges righteously. And Father, we find it difficult to even understand that. That Lord, instead of trying to defend, he just committed himself to thee, Father, who judges righteously, and determined in his heart that this is what my Father desires, and therefore this is what will happen. Not trying to excuse himself as a lamb to the slaughter, he said nothing. And then, even as we read in First Peter chapter 2, that he then, in his own body, he bare our sins upon that tree. That, Lord, this evening we might find life. And we know that as that happened, we were freed from sin and death, Lord. We found life in the Lord Jesus. And it says that we were risen, as it were, with him in righteousness. And by his stripes we are healed. Father as was declared this evening, a mighty, mighty miracle, that we were dead. We were, Lord, we were putrid, as it were. We were lying, groveling in the filth of our sin. Lord, we were wounded. We were dead, Father, with only one outcome, and that was a Christless eternity. And yet the Lord Jesus went. And for us, as sinner, he paid that price, Lord, that we might be cleansed this evening, that we might find ourselves risen in the newness of life, Lord, renewed, reborn. Father, a wonderful miracle by his stripes, we are healed. And so, Father, we say thank you this evening that we can partake of these emblems as your people, Father, as those that, Lord, would hold our hand up to the Most High God and serve no foreign God. Lord, to hold our hand up to our Savior, the Lord Jesus, who, Lord, sits in heaven at this very moment. Our elder brother, Lord, risen, wearing his, his wonderful resurrection body and Father interceding for us this evening. And then we understand, Lord, that if God be for us, then who can be against us? Father, we give glory. We lift up the name of Jesus. We exalt him, Father. We praise him, Lord, with everything that's within our being, Lord. We don't even have the words for that. But Lord, you search our hearts. You know, Lord, our intent this evening. And as we would just bring the fruit of our lips, we know too that that is acceptable unto thee. And so, Father, we give glory to thee. We say thank you for your precious son. We give him glory and praise and honor. And dominion and power belong unto him, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, tonight we are so privileged to be able to be gathered together as brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, each in our own homes, but even as we've been, as been ministered already, we are seated in heavenly places, Lord. What a wonderful blessing it is, Father, to know that we can just stop in our day and give you praise and honor and glory and thanks, Lord, for all that you've done for us. 
for going to the cross of Calvary, for dying for each one of us, and not just for us, for the whole world, for your word says that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever might believe in him might have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And you did not come to the world to condemn them, but you came to save them, Lord Jesus. And you saved me, a sinner condemned, as we heard, to a Christless eternity, and you rescued me, Lord. You can do it for anyone. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, Father, for salvation. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of, of the cross. I thank you for the gift of the stable, Lord, for what it represents. It represents, it represents peace. It represents the ultimate love that you could ever extend, Lord. And for that, we are truly grateful. Father, thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for the rich manner which we received, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the warning to not be deceived. There's so much in this world that is there to take us away from, from you, Lord Jesus. But we know when we focus on you, the things of the world do grow strangely dumb. Mm. And that we can guard our hearts by coming under your word. Because it's by hearing your word and by the washing of your word that our minds can be renewed and that we can be transformed into those new creatures in Christ. And Lord, we know that this world is but a, a passing moment, Lord. And everything that we're going through here is for eternity, Father. The choices that we make in this life will determine where we end up in the next life. So help us, Lord, not to get caught up in the year and the now. Not to get caught up in the challenges and in the trials and tribulations of life. But Lord, let us be that light to the world. Let us show the joy of our salvation, of thy salvation, Lord, to those around who are hopeless in the world, who, who don't have that salvation, who don't know the Lord Jesus. Let us extend of ourselves to those people, Lord, those in our families, those in our communities, those in our workplaces, wherever we are, Father, that we will continue to shine in and that you will continue to shine in and through us and use us for your kingdom and for your purposes. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Let's take the emblems now, guys, but I, cont I pray that you continue to, uh, to be led by the Lord as we go forward here, but you can start taking your emblems. Thank you. No, no, I don't want it to no. oh. clear it. Lord, I just want to thank you for dying on the cross, Lord. For me, Lord, I just want to thank you for cleaning me, Lord, and cleaning everybody else, Lord. Lord, I just thank you that I can take part. And I can be a um, spiritual Lord and thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. The Lord would remind you that even as was shared this evening, mm -hmm. how that veil was rent in half, and how even when the Lord Jesus rose, even the temple shook and there were those that were buried that even rose from their tombs and walked amongst the people. People were amazed. The Lord would say to you tonight, there's going to come a time where the people again are going to be amazed, where there's going to be a great meeting. And the Lord would say to you today that he's given you everything to be in heavenly places. And even as we've heard tonight and, how we understand that we've all been cleansed. We've been set free. The Lord would say to you today, not only are we set free, but we've been given his power to go and anoint those that are around us by the fruits of our lips to share the love of Christ. And the Lord would say to you today, this gift is not a gift that we need to sit on, but we need to, cherish this gift. We need to open our lips. 
We need to allow the Lord to use us for his glory. And he would say today, don't be those that sit waiting. He would want us to be those that stand up, even as was shared this morning. Like Peter, when he walked in the water, the Lord would say, go out boldly and share the love of Christ that I've given to you, that others can see and know that we serve a living God. And he would remind you that he's equipped you mm. to do all these things in his name. Praise your name, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Yes, Father, as, um, as we heard tonight, Lord, that if you are for us, Lord, you can be against us, Lord. And as I think that of all that you've done, Lord, as you died on the cross, Lord, and then and then raise yourself up again, Lord. Man has tried to replicate that, Lord, but we can't, Lord. And, and you did it without any effort, Lord. And, and I just think, Lord, why are we scared, Lord? And why are we fearful, Lord? And we must just trust in you, Lord. And I just want to thank you for dying across me, Lord, and just and washing my sins away and just being being my God, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken order to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Yes, Father God, I just want to come to you tonight, Lord, and I want to thank you, Lord, that once I was a captive, Lord, once I was a prisoner, Lord, and you came on the cross, Lord, you came to die for me on the cross, Lord, so that I can no longer be captive, Lord, that sin has no more... Sin and death has no more dominion over my life, but that I can just come, Father, humbly at the throne of grace, Lord, and, and bow a knee at your feet, Lord, and, and just find a place, Lord, where I can just come to you, Lord, and, and, and pour my heart out to you, Lord. And, and I just thank you, Father God, for sending your son to die on the cross for me, Lord, a sinner set free, no longer captive. And Lord, I just thank you for that, and I honor you, and I give all the glory to you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Amen. your name. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God. Lord Jesus, I also thank you for what you've done on the cross for me. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me of that which was, uh, which was held me in bondage so many years ago. Thank you, Lord, for, that you've set me free, that I'm able to be your child. Although I wasn't worthy, Lord Jesus, you made me worthy through what you did on the cross for me. I thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. Father, I just want to thank you for this, for the joy and the privilege of coming around your table in the presence of your enemies to show forth your death until you come again. Father, I just want to say thank you for preparing our heart for such a time as this, Lord, and you've given us a vision of a new heaven and a new earth. What an awesome God we saw, uh, we, we uh, serve. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you that we can all come together 
even though, Lord, we're in lockdown, we can come together like this and just praise and worship your wonderful name. Father God, I come to, uh, tonight to worship and praise you sure. for sending your only son to this world to suffer and die on the cross for my sins and all the, that confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And we examine ourselves as we break bread tonight, remembering the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Mighty God. Yes, my Lord, I just come before you this evening and my Lord, I just give you thanks and praise for <clears throat> just everything that you've done. And my Lord, just even as your word went out, has gone out and has been going out this evening, my Lord, that that you, and as it says, my Lord, that you have given us all things that pertain unto life and God in Christ Jesus. My Lord, I just want to thank you for that. And even as we call around the table this evening, we we call to judge our hearts, whether whether we believe that, Father God, whether we believe that um, you truly do abide in us, that you truly are always with us, Father God. And <clears throat> my Lord, I just want to thank you that um, in your word, you confirm many times that you are with us, always, Father God. And my Lord, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, but that you would, as the word says, that you'll create your abode within us. Mm -hmm. And my Lord, uh, I just want to, I just want to thank you for that, Father God. And my Lord, just even in our hearts, in my heart, Father God, I pray that you'd help us just to, just to understand that, just to truly take that in, to comprehend that, and just believe in our hearts that you do abide within us, that you have given us all things that pertain to love and godliness. And my Lord, I just want to just give you all praise on and glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Alec, you're going to lead us in another song there? Yeah, we can end with a song. Praise the Lord. Sure, we can. We can do that song. And then, um, Craig, are you still there? Uh, doesn't look like he's still there. And then, um, maybe, Alec, once you finish singing, can, you, can I ask, seeing that you're going to mute everybody else's mics, can you uh, close the meeting for us after that? Ah, Craig is back there. We'll, we'll unmute him. back there. There's you. I can't see him. No, it's there. <laughs> well, Craig will close for us. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Okay, so let's all just mute our mics so that obviously uh, we don't all have back feet. Okay, I'll just make sure everyone is muted. All right.
we are just so grateful that you can gather around your table this evening. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you've given us all things pertaining to life. But Father, that you speak to us, that you show us your word, you confirm your word. And I just pray, Father, that you will lead us, guide us this week, that you'll strengthen our faith, that we be doers of your word, Father, that the spirit of your son would grow richly in our hearts. Father, that <clears throat> and the fruits of our life will be good and pleasing to you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody.